All right, guys, so we got to talk about some news, some international news out of the UK, which, you know, I, I like to dabble in just a little bit of European politics, just a little bit. I don't really know that much about it, uh, but it is quite entertaining, right? Some things that we're saying coming out of the UK, which I think is really just a symptom of kind of what we're seeing in Western society as a whole, okay? And this is why I kind of like, you know, dabbling in that news a little bit right and uh this story right here is about scotland which is a part of the uk and the fact that they have a new prime minister a guy by the name of hamza yusuf who was born to pakistani immigrants okay he is a nationalist politician who actually wants independence for scotland now scotland has been thinking about independence from uh the uk okay and calls for independence have kind of revved up after the uk decided to leave the european union right uh and you know there's some nationalists that want to leave the uk and you know be their own country be independent and then rejoin the european union right so again there's a whole lot of kind of politics here at play okay which i, I don't know that much about but uh one thing i can speak on is this video that is going viral of this guy right this guy that's set to become the new prime minister of scotland mr hamza yusuf who was born to pakistani immigrants right complaining about the country being too white okay this guy is woke and i want to play this clip of him complaining about the country and the leadership of the country being too white because again this is one of the wackiest woke rants i've ever heard in my life for so many reasons so without further ado let's go ahead and roll the clip and to my colleagues on the government bench, we know that we are not immune either. Some people were surprised. They were taken aback even by the mention on my social media that 99% of the meetings I go to, I'm the only non-white person in the room. But why are we so surprised when the most senior positions in Scotland are filled almost exclusively by those who are white? Take my portfolio alone. The Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. The Lord Advocate, white. The Solicitor General, white. The Chief Constable, white. Every Deputy Chief Constable, white. Every Assistant Chief Constable, white. The Head of the Law Society, white. The Head of the Faculty of Advocates, white. Every Prison Governor, white. And not just Justice. The Chief Medical Officer, white. The Chief Nursing Officer, white. The Chief Veterinary Officer, white. The Chief Social Work Advisor, white. Almost every trade union in this country headed by people who are white. In the Scottish Government, every Director General is white. Every chair of every public body is white. That is not good enough. I don't doubt that if I looked across the private sector, that black and minority ethnic people would similarly be underrepresented at senior levels. This is a collective failure on every single one of us. So I hope we're sitting uncomfortably because these should be uncomfortable truths for us all. So don't just tweet Black Lives Matters. Don't post or don't just post a hashtag. Don't just take the knee. As people of color, we don't need your gestures. Yes, solidarity is helpful, but what we need from you is action and for you to be anti-racist by your deeds. Don't just tell us how you are not a racist. I take that as a bare minimum. You must be anti-racist. Yeah, so as you can see here, this person is a disciple of Imbram X. Kendi, okay? Uh, this speech was given right after the George Floyd incident, okay? So this was given in June of 2020. Um, so again, this guy is, is, is super woke, right? And what's funny about this rant and how silly it is, it, it, there's just so many reasons, but let's start with the first reason. Uh, Scotland is 96% white, right? Like 2% Asian and like less than 1% everything else, okay? And this person is saying that Scotland's leadership is not diverse enough when there are literally nothing but white people in the country, okay? The country is mainly all white. So how can you have diverse leadership when there's literally not enough people who are not white to be in positions of leadership in the country, right? Again, I'm not understanding like this whole thing, okay? Because they tell us 
that when minorities are not represented enough, that it's supposed to be proportional to the population. Well, again, if we're talking about proportionality in, in leadership, then you really should see only 4% of the leadership be non-white. Everybody else should be white, right? But apparently, again, that's not diverse enough. So now all of a sudden, it's not about proportionality to the population anymore. It's just about having less white, right? Just less white, okay? This is what these people are, are meaning when they say anti-racist. Because again, in Scotland, there's nothing but white people, right? Of course, all the leadership is going to be white. And despite this, they still voted for your ass, right, to be leader. Again, that's what really blows my mind. You have a problem with the people because of their skin color. But apparently these people aren't so racist that they wouldn't vote for somebody like you, right? A, a brown Muslim man, right, who's telling them how racist they are, okay? Again, it, it really blows my mind. It really does. Okay, these people that live in the West, these Western countries, whether it be the United States, the UK, wherever, right? Um, they pretend that their lives are so hard that whiteness is a problem. But they're living in majority white countries that, objectively speaking here, um, their quality of life, their opportunities are so much greater and so much more than what they would have had if they were still in their uh countries of origin right like if this guy was in pakistan imagine how his life would be okay less white people there do you think that your life would have been better i don't think so i don't think so i think your life would have been a lot worse right i i think that you know there's a significant chance that maybe just maybe uh, you wouldn't have got the education that you got. Who knows? Maybe you'd be fighting in the army, okay? Because there's always war or whatever going on over there. Maybe you'd be radicalized. I'm not sure. I have no clue, right? But I'm just saying, because you live in a mostly white country, you have the opportunities that you have. But you want to fundamentally change the country in ways that wouldn't be acceptable if it was any other country that was majority not white. Like, for example, how silly would it be to say, hey, there's not enough white leadership in Pakistan, <laughs> right? You, I mean, that, that would be such a silly thing to say or to say there's not enough white leadership in Uganda. Again, you only can say this about majority white countries. Majority whites are supposed to diversify, right? They're supposed to allow other people to come into their, their country and to, you know, run it and to do whatever, right? That's supposed to be the right thing to do. But when it comes to these other countries that are majority not white, no, 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 no. It's not okay for the white man to come in there and start running stuff. In fact, that's what these people complain about the most. The white man going into other people's countries and running stuff, right? In non-white countries and taking it over. That's what they complain about the most. So again, you can't have it both ways, man. That, that's the thing that bothers me about these people, okay? Um, apparently, again, if you got a problem with a lack of diversity in Scotland, a majority white country then you should have this same problem with a lack of diversity in the leadership in Pakistan or the leadership in, you know, uh, these African countries, right? They need more whites, right? Again, or for example, maybe China, they need more Latinos. You know what I'm saying? That can apply to any other race. It's not just a black, white thing. It can apply to any other country, any other race, right? Where it's like, look, you know, I mean, I'm not going to ask a Chinese person to run some country in, 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 in Latin America. Oh, you need more Chinese people right? <laughs> you need more uh, people from, you know, Indonesia or something. Like, that's silly, right? It's so silly, okay? They only do this in the West, right? They only do this in the majority of white countries. And it's just so funny how that works. Um, that's not to say that, you know, there shouldn't be, you know, people of all different races having opportunities to be a leader of, of a country, uh, in the West, but what, what I'm saying is that I don't think there's this need to specifically talk about how it's too white, okay? Because clearly, clearly, uh, you being a brown person, you not being white is not holding you back, <laughs> despite the fact that, again, you're, you're not white, okay? It's not holding you back. Clearly, you're able to have opportunity. Again, opportunity that will only be available in a majority <laughs> white country, right? I'm just saying, um, Hey, but you know, this is who they voted for. 
And uh, we'll see how it works out for him when he actually becomes prime minister. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.